we have now talked how to generalize the spectrum, the eigenvalues of a self adjoint operator to the infinite dimensional situation. Um, and we have seen that there, we, in addition to uh, eigenvalues, we also have the continuous spectrum, which consists of approximate eigenvalues or, or values where we have approximate eigenvectors. Yeah, but now we still have to generalize maybe the most important thing about symmetric or self adjoint matrices, uh, namely that we can diagonalize them, which means we can bring them into a form uh, where, yeah, which is diagonal and the eigenvalues are sitting on the diagonal. And of course, we also know that the eigenvalues of real uh, of, of self-adjoint matrices are real, which corresponds to the fact that the spectrum of self-adjoint operators in general uh, are also a subset of the of the real axis. Yeah, so what we want to do is to generalize this kind of diagonalization to the infinite dimensional situation. And of course, it might not be so clear how to deal with this. And maybe the best way is really to think, uh, what does it mean to have this diagonal form? It, this means that essentially we can write our Hilbert space as a direct sum of the eigenspaces. And on each eigenspace, the operator acts as a multiplication with the eigenvalue. Uh, so maybe let, let me first write this down in the finite dimensional situation and then we see how we can or might extend this to the infinite dimensional one. So this is a motivation starting from the finite dimensional situation. So we consider a Hilbert space which has finite dimension, let's say n, oh, so this is less than infinity, and we consider a, a linear operator there which of course is automatically bounded. Uh, so all the subtleties which we have seen in the infinite dimensions are not showing up here. Uh, so we consider a bounded operator which is self-adjoint. Uh, of course, and I mean, uh, in finite dimensions, an operator corresponds to a matrix uh, via choosing a basis. Uh, so if we do this, then we can identify A uh, with a matrix. And so we have, of course, the spectrum of this operator. So let's say the spectrum of A. Uh, those are the eigenvalues, and they are all real. And of course, they might have multiplicity. So I mean, there might not be n different one of them, but let's say there are k of them. And of course, we, we know that the algebraic and the, uh, uh, and the geometric multiplicities are the same. Huh? Good, so we write this here as lambda 1, and so I order them. Lambda 1 is strictly less than lambda 2, and so on. And we have k of them, and lambda k is the biggest one. Uh, so of course, the lambda i's are real numbers. And so we have ordered them uh, on the real line. Uh, so we have lambda 1 up to lambda k. And we have, of we have the corresponding uh, eigenspaces. Uh, so let us denote them by h lambda for each of those lambdas here. So let, for lambda in the spectrum, uh, h lambda be the eigenspace corresponding to lambda. So h subspace lambda is by definition the eigenspace. So this means the vectors in my Hilbert space such that a acting on this vector gives just multiplication by lambda. Yeah, so this is the eigenspace b eigenspace to the eigenvalue lambda. Yeah, and then the spectral theorem or the, the fact that we can diagonalize our operator uh, can be formulated in a way that uh, the eigenspaces all together, they give us a sufficiently uh, many yeah, uh, basis vectors for the space or we can decompose the whole Hilbert space in a direct sum of those uh, eigenspaces. And furthermore, the eigenspaces corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. Uh, that, that's coming from the uh, self-adjointness of our operator. Yeah, but so let me write it down. So the spectral theorem in this setting, so for self-adjoint matrices, can be stated in the following way. So first of all, uh, yeah, the algebraic 
multiplicity of the eigen uh, values is the geometric one. Huh? So if, if, I'm, if I'm just taking uh, eigen eigenvectors, there are enough of them to give me a basis and actually an orthonormal basis for the whole Hilbert space. Huh? So this means I can decompose the Hilbert space in a direct sum of the eigenspaces uh, for the elements in the spectrum, huh? so for the eigenvectors. Huh? Okay, huh? so this means, so this direct sum here is in the Hilbert space uh, context, so this means in particular all those guys here, the different ones are orthogonal. So maybe let me write this down again explicitly. Uh, so this direct sum here means essentially two things, namely first of all that the different summons here are orthogonal, so h lambda i is orthogonal to h lambda j uh, for i different from j. Uh, so this means eigen uh, vectors to different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. And furthermore, together they span the whole Hilbert space, so this means each element in my Hilbert space can be written as a linear combination as elements coming from the H lambdas. So each x in H can actually uniquely be written as a sum over components, components from the different uh, H lambda i's. Huh? So xi, where i is running from 1 to k, and the xi is an eigen vector to the eigen value lambda i. Huh? So it's in the eigen space H lambda i. Yeah. And maybe to get, of course, to get the xi from the x, we have just to project down the x to the eigenspace. Huh? So maybe let me also denote this projection, this orthogonal projection from h to h lambda by uh, p lambda. Huh? So let me denote p lambda. Oh, this is an operator on my Hilbert space, a bounded operator. Of course, we have finite dimensions. Uh, so, okay, but it's a projection. And a projection would also be bounded in infinite dimensions, but okay, so here it's bounded anyhow, and it goes to H lambda, so this, this only makes sense, I mean, all those things can also be defined if lambda is not in the spectrum, but then they are just trivial objects, huh? so I mean, the, the, eigen, the eigen space for lambda which is not in the spectrum is just uh, the set consisting of zero, huh? so uh, all those things are trivial, it's only interesting if lambda is in the spectrum, and in this case, so the p lambda should be the orthogonal projection onto the eigenspace uh, for lambda. So the orthogonal projection onto the eigenspace for lambda. Okay, and with this notation, of course, I can write uh, component uh, xi, which I have in this, uh, this uh, sum here, as the projection of x onto uh, this eigenspace. So this is just uh, p lambda i applied to x. Huh? So then we have xi is p lambda i applied to x. And with this piece, I can now also write my, uh, yeah, my uh, operator in a very nice form. I mean, we still have to see that, wh what does it mean that I can diagonalize my operator? Huh? So I diagonalize it essentially uh, in these eigenspaces, basis. And what does it mean uh, for my operator? So how can I write it in, in a nice form which reflects this diagonalization in a more algebraic form? Huh? So this is the following. So with all these uh, settings, so we have that I can write the action of my operator, and so let's see what it does on arbitrary element in my Hilbert space, so my operator is A, uh, let, me act, let me act it on X, and so I use this decomposition, X can be written as the sum over the XI's, so this here is the sum over the I's of A applied to XI, uh, and of course the XI is an eigenvector to the eigenvalue uh, lambda i, uh, so this action here, this is just lambda i of xi. Uh, maybe let me write it again, so this is the sum over i, uh, lambda i 
xi. And maybe if I want to go back to the x, uh, so I mean I want to write an equation uh, which is true for all x's, so that I can get something just for the operator itself by removing the x, I just should now write the xi as the action of the projection onto x. Uh, so I can also write this as the sum over i, lambda i, uh, p, lambda i, x. Yeah, and then you see this is now true for all x, so this means we can write the operator a as the sum over the lambda i uh, p of p of lambda i. Yeah. Okay, so this means we have now a kind of a way of writing our operator, and this is really what what essentially what it means uh, to be diagonal uh, in the chosen basis with the eigen uh, vectors. So namely, we have this the sum from one to k lambda i p lambda i. Uh, or maybe if I don't want to write this uh, index i, maybe I'm just summing over lambda in the spectrum of a, and then I have lambda uh, p lambda. Uh, okay, uh, so that's, that's the spectral theorem, how I can write my operator a in an appropriately chosen basis, Basis means here uh, with respect to the projection operators on the eigenspaces. Yeah, but now we would like to see what can we do with this in infinite dimensions. Of course, there will be problems. Huh? We cannot expect that we can write things in this form. Huh? So, I mean, we would like to generalize this to infinite dimensions, but we have to see how this can be done. So, we like... to generalize this to infinite dimensions. Yeah, okay, so let, let us go to infinite dimensions. Consider now a setting uh, where the Hilbert space is infinite dimensional, or let's say it, it's arbitrary. Uh, so, I mean, the finite dimensional case also is a, is a subset of this, but of course, the interesting features only happen if I go to infinite dimensions, and consider a self adjoint operator. Huh? And I mean, I allow here unbounded operators. Huh? I really want to get, I mean, I want to generalize this essentially in, in two directions, namely first to go to infinite dimensions, but also consider considering unbounded operators. Yeah, and um, we already know uh, how the spectrum in this situation uh, looks like. So we have the spectrum, but the spectrum is now not, uh, is, is can be of a more general nature than in finite dimensions. So the spectrum uh, still has or can has the eigenvalues. So this is the point spectrum, but there can also be a continuous part. And in general, there might also be a residual part, but for self adjoint operators, this is not there. Huh? So we don't have to bother about this. Yeah, and of course, the point spectrum, uh, this we can more or less write in the same way as above. Huh? So for the point spectrum, for this part, uh, the spectral theorem works as above. Yeah, but of course here, in this continuous spectrum, there we have problem, huh? but problems, because there, there are no eigenspaces. Huh? I mean, of course, I still can define, as I said before, I mean, I can define the H lambda, huh, which lambda in the, in the spectrum, but in the continuous spectrum, then I'm looking for eigenvectors for the lambda, but there are no eigenvectors. Huh? Th that's the point that I'm here in a part of the spectrum where I don't have eigenvectors or non, not non-trivial ones, so the eigenspace consists just of zero, and of course the corresponding p lambda uh, also is just a zero operator. Huh? It just projects down everything uh, to zero. So this means uh, I mean, writing A as a sum over elements in the spectrum will give uh, a reasonable part, a reasonable, reasonable representation for the part corresponding to the point spectrum, but the continuous spectrum is totally lost here because the p's are all zero. Uh, okay, so this means uh, this is not the way uh, we can hope to have it in infinite dimensions, but what we can do is to replace uh, this uh, guys here, uh, uh, the eigenvectors by approximate eigenvectors. Huh? We have seen, I mean, in, in a continuous spectrum, we don't have eigenvectors anymore, but we have approximate eigenvectors. 
Uh, so this means we cannot localize things exactly at lambda, but we can localize them in a small neighborhood. And of course, this gives us the idea that instead of having a sum, we might maybe be able to write this in terms of an integral. Uh, and that's, that's what we are going to do. Uh, so this doesn't work as a sum because we don't have uh, actual eigenvectors, but we can replace this by approximate versions because we have approximate eigenvectors. Yeah, and so let us see. May maybe let us look on this in the case of uh, maybe the, the canonical example which we have where we really have seen what approximate eigenvectors mean, namely the multiplication operator. 